Hi everyone, I'm Ellen Noble. I'm a professional cyclocross and mountain bike racer. And in 2019, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In the years since, I have struggled to come back to high level competitive racing, but this year I'm so excited to finally make my return. I've had a lot of really amazing conversations with close friends and colleagues about what it means to overcome setback. And some of them have really inspired me. So I've decided to finally record some of those conversations and I'm really excited to get to share them with you all. First up on these interviews is my manager, Pat Lemieux. We've been working together for just over two years and in our time together, I have learned so much from Pat and he manages so many incredible athletes. And I think that he has a lot to share with everyone. So without further ado, here is my interview with Pat Lemieux. Pat, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me today. Hey, really happy to be on. Um, so I know that we kind of went over a little bit, but just for context, I sort of wanted to go over kind of like what the gist of this um, interview, if you will, uh, sure. is all about. So um, as you know, I am a few days away from my first mountain bike race in nearly two years. And of course, the pandemic has played a big role in at least one of those years. But additionally, I've faced a ton of health setbacks um, before and during the COVID times. And managing those, in my opinion, was an even bigger hurdle yep. for getting me back to racing. So in the lead up to the races, I realized that I relied really heavily on my friends and my resources, such as yourself, um, to just try to get advice on like how to come back. And so I realized like in these conversations that I have so many amazing friends who know so much that are talking about things that we all um, kind of need to know about, because I realized that a lot of people are going through their own comeback right now, because most people haven't done a race in a really long time. So whether it's just from COVID or so much more, there's a lot, I think that people could really benefit from the same questions that I'm dying to ask. So that's sort of the motivation behind these. And I'm really happy that you're my first guest of hopefully many. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, no, uh, thrilled to thrilled to be on and, and help some, you know, hopefully help some other people as they navigate this. You know, I'm I'm even me, like I didn't get to race last year. And I when I think about when my last race was, and now we're getting into 15, 16, 17 months ago, I'm just like, holy smokes, like this is this is the longest period I've ever had since I was 13 years old. From yeah bike racing so um yeah it is it is overwhelming to think about it's crazy so yeah it's it's so funny even for people who like raced right up until the pandemic and maybe be like some of the earlier adopters it's still a really long time and so I think maybe that's a good way to start is there are some people who even if they were like really close to the start and stop of racing it's still been over a year and a lot of people still have not yet done their first race, whether it's for convenience or safety. A lot of people are still eyeing yes. their first event. And so I think something that I've really wondered is about managing expectations around that first race. Because I think when COVID first closed everything down, people trained really hard to stay ready. And I know I was, I was sure. doing the same thing. Yep. But how do you now manage like that expectation around everyone wants to win the first race, but there can only be one winner? Um, sure and trying to manage those expectations. Sure. So I think, you know, I would, I would encourage others and you've, you've done an amazing job of this. And I would say like your mindset has really transformed over in the last, you know, two years since we've been working together. Um, I think you were very early on in working with you. You were quick to become a victim of circumstance, right? And you'd say like, why is this happening? What's going on? And you've had this amazing transformation in the last two plus years where you've grown and, and adopted an acceptance mindset and really everything that's been thrown at you, whether it's no racing, health issues, training setbacks, you've been able to say, look, I'm accepting that this is happening to me and I'm going to work through it and I'm going to move forward. So I would encourage others to do like what you've done and, and find and learn how to work on finding and creating an acceptance mindset around things and say, you know, look, this weekend, it's my first race in 16 months. I accept that I'm not the most ready I'm going to be because we've had a year plus of no racing, but I'm excited to see where I'm at 
on Saturday. And I think if people were to view it through that lens, they're going to be able to say, to look back on the weekend and say like, look, these are the things, these are the steps that I got correct in racing. Now I've got to work on, you know, here's my to-do list for the next race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that lines up really well with the conversation Alan, my, my coach for context, um, sure. and I have been having is like, there's no good or bad. There's just information. Yep. Um, but I think that can be really, really hard for people, especially like, I think that people really want that, like sort of everybody like, wants, perfect moment. Everybody wants to win and everybody wants to win at the first weekend back. Yeah. No, no question about that. Um, I want to go back to winning races again. <laughs> yeah, we all It's do. been years since I won a race. <laughs> So yeah, it wasn't just the pandemic. Like, there so. is like a hard reality. Like, you know, okay, these are the steps it takes to win races. Did you do those steps? And where are you at? And then bike racing is this brutal sport, right? Where there's 50 people that line up, 49 are going to lose and one is going to win. This is not a team sport where you're, you know, your chance of winning is 50, 50. This is like 99% to one. So yeah. bike racing is very, very relentless that way. Um, so I, look, most people this weekend, they're going to have forgot stuff like race fueling, tire pressure, you know, did you put fresh sealant in your wheels? Did you warm up correctly? Like there's going to just be a lot of race day cobwebs that have got to get blown out. And those can be, you know, the meal you ate the night before. I mean, it's just going to be a whole learning curve and it's okay. going to be what I would encourage most people to do is document the, the 72 hours before the race and think about what you did right. And I, it was funny. I, I didn't learn this until in my, like, I'll call it my career of bike racing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't understand how important it was to like prime my engine the day before a race. And I just was like, wow, what if I had learned that when I was 18 years old, that yeah. would have been really, really helpful. And so those, like, it's just those little things um, that I would try and that I would encourage others to keep track of. And, and, you know, one thing that you've done really well, Ellen, is your, your curiosity around performance and what makes people perform better has improved. And I think, you know, too often we look at stubbornness as a trait of fantastic athletes, and we don't acknowledge that curious athletes should be um i almost hold in a higher reg regard because they sit there and they look and they study and their students of are people that are around them and and other sports and say well what are they doing that's successful and working that i can bring to my arena absolutely and i think the key is successful and working and being able to suss out what's actually successful and working and what just works because they're too talented for it, like, because they're so talented in general. And I think sure. I see a lot of athletes that are super talented and incredible that won't open their eyes to other things that could help them more. And you're like, you're really talented. So you can get away with, yeah. you know, you have a broader window, but I, I think something that I wanted to touch on that you had said a minute ago is, you know, only one person can, can win the race but focusing on like personal victories in a weekend. And I think that's something we've talked about a lot. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll use an example. Um, you know, one of my clients, Lionel did a race a few weeks ago. He got second, his first race back after a big break. And he sat there and was like, you know, I'm really happy. I did every, there's nothing I could have done to yeah. do better on the weekend and to see his joy around being second place. I was so proud of him as a person and to be like, okay, here's a person that's having like, I would, I'll call it like a borderline out of body experience to be like, okay, I can recognize my performance as an athlete. There's nothing I could have done to optimize and to be, to win. I'm actually, I'm not going to deviate from my training plan and I'm going to just keep training because the amount of progress that I've made in that period of time to that race was fantastic. And yeah. I think people could, should go back and look at his post-race thoughts because it was, um, again, as an athlete and a person, I was, I was blown away and that was a world-class like post-race debrief. Yeah. I think that's so cool. And it's something that I think people have a hard time understanding, but when you can get into that 
reflection to say, I couldn't have done anything better. Like I've had those experiences. I've had some really close second places yep. that I was elated with. Cause I was like, that was beyond the best race that I could have had. Yep. And so I think having that, you know, whether that means getting second at a really big race like Lionel or getting 15th yep. in your own personal local race, um, just understanding like when you've done a really good job, it's, I think it just increases longevity in the sport. Yep, I do too. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a world, um, yeah. And I've, I've had those same instances in like local cross races, right. Where I'm yeah. so pumped to be eighth. I'm like, yeah, that was insane. <laughs> I was just like, right. I was firing on all cylinders. That was great. Um, maybe next week I can be sixth. you know, yeah. like that's, <laughs> that's cool. You know? So, um, yeah, I think those are, those are going to be the emotions that, you know, play out in this weekend's race and be like, okay, this is going to be Races are always tough, right? Because they're so confronting physically, mentally, emotionally, like it is, they are, there's no hiding on race day, right? And so they are these just like, they're these exams that everyone can see, right? Yeah. And imagine if you were in school and they posted everybody's exam immediately afterwards, right? Yes. Like that's, that's what it is. That's what race day is. Um, so it's, there, there's a ton of emotion and it's going to be, you know, I'm not, I don't want to hide it. Like, and I don't sugarcoat things to you. Like it, this, this weekend will be super tough, you know, yeah. no matter what happens, like it's going to be racing is always going to be brutal. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I think the more, like the thing I've learned the most in the last couple of years is how kind of volatile our bodies can be. And it's like, you can do everything that you want. What we talk about, I think maybe most often is to control the controllables because when you finally realize like so much of your system is out of your hands mm -hmm. and it can just really do anything that it wants on a given day. I feel like it yeah. makes the things that you really can control like your preparation even more, even more empowering, I guess. Yep. 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 Yeah. I mean, I just, I think it goes back to even like, I think about what I've seen Gwen do where she'll document everything that, you know, the three things she did well and the three things she could improve upon. Yeah. And I think about in a world now where like I have a little bit more quote unquote job than I did five years ago. Those are, those are practices that I want to bring into my everyday life too, where it's like, I, I nitpick on the things that I could have done better yesterday where I, mm -hmm. I can also recognize the things that I am doing well every single day as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's huge. And being able to give yourself that grace, I think is really important because it can be easy to focus on like the one little thing, but you know, it's, it's not really fair to yourself to always say like, oh, I just did really poorly. Like, what about all the things that you did well? And especially coming into these early races, it's like even just showing up, like, yep. you know, sometimes they're hard to find, but yep. positive wins are always like little wins are always there. Yep. <clears throat> Um, I think I have a little bit of a deviation from, cool. from like the positive comeback is, you know, like this maybe doesn't relate. I think some people will relate to it pandemic wise, but this is more about like injury or like setback and all of that. Like you've always been like default positive encouragement, comeback, <laughs> you got this moving forward sort of thing. And sure. I think like I think Gwen's most recent YouTube video a couple of weeks ago about how like that was the first time that she really said, I'm going to quit and she meant it. And yep. then like had that turnaround yep. with you, like to borrow a phrase from Alan, like when, when would you as a manager and as like your support role with Gwen, when would you say that like the juice isn't worth the squeeze for an athlete to try to come back? Because I don't know if we ever yeah, even you know, have that I mean, conversation. I, yeah, I think that's tough to say because I haven't delivered an athlete to the end of their career yet. Okay. And I, haven't, I haven't put an, like, for lack of a better word, I haven't put an athlete to pasture yet. <laughs> um, okay. So I would say at the end of the day, my job is to, you know, I tell I tell people this, like, I'm not in the business of sales. I'm in the business of service, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I work for you. And you need to be happy to do your job. So whether it's you or somebody else, you know, I would just, I try to always present doors to you. Door number one, door number two for different sponsors and say, try to give you looks inside and say, this is what I believe it will look like. Mm -hmm. 
I think when it would come to the end of an athlete's career, I would provide what I could see as the best look and offer my best advice for what's behind door number one, if you keep racing mm -hmm. and door number two, if you stop racing. And I think like that, <sighs> those would just be the examples that I would give and the best advice, but ultimately, um, you know, in the case of you, like I've always tried to give you, you always have ownership of your decisions. I give you the best information I can with the, with what I have in front of me. And I'd say like, it's your call. What do we think we're going to do here? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that really makes sense, but I think like what it sort of brings up is that there was something that you had sensed, like, you know, from what I gathered with Gwen and like sure. her mentioning like her one serious conversation, like that we had never talked about, like, is this maybe the time for me to hang up the skates? Like even, you know, I know that you have had other athletes that I know personally that have also had definitely yeah. setbacks that would have been justified to like be done with. But for yeah. some reason, it's always been comeback focused and not like maybe this is my sign. Sure. Um, I, we, Gwen was at, we'll use her example from like a month or five weeks ago. I mean, that yeah. was such a low point for her mm -hmm. mentally that yeah. like, I didn't try and talk her out of it. Like I just gave her that time and space and I'm just like, look, I'm here for you. I support you no matter what we're going, what mm -hmm. you're going to decide, you know, this is when you've kind of just got to lean into your, the people that support you and say like, you know, what are we going to do? And like, if it wasn't for her coach, Jerry, you know, they talked three days after the event and Glenn was like, what, what am I, what am I doing here? You know, mm -hmm. he just said like, I'm, I'm not giving up on you. Like this isn't over yet. Um, you know, had that phone call not happened and that faith continued to be placed in her ability, I think that she, I really do think that she would have quit. I mean, I was looking at houses all over. I was like, okay, well, we're going to move. We're going to be done. And yeah, like, let's, I was ready to go. You know, I was like, let's just sell our house and be, and get out of here. So yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy times. Yeah. So like, <laughs> well, I guess like, I mean, I can't, I can't, I say I can't imagine, but I also can, because I feel like I've oh, been yeah. there privately, Definitely. like a million times like every time I like have to miss a workout I'm like is this going to be forever and <laughs> it isn't it hasn't been yet yeah. but it, it feels yeah. like it is it always feels so perfect no. like, it feels so permanent in the moment yeah. yep so I just I, sorry go ahead I mean I just remember you know we've been on the roller coaster together like you had those two races in Oklahoma that you smashed I'm like I remember your you know your previous coach Al and I were speaking we're like dude I think you know Ellen's coming together we're like this is going to be a decent nationals like we're okay yeah. And then, you know, it was like, you kind of slipped and then you had that one that you did a weekend in Texas that didn't go perfectly. And we're like, okay. And then like the wheels came off and you just got sick. And like, we had to sit down with you on a phone call and just be like, Ellen, you were not in your like window of what was allowed for variables. Yeah. Taking time off for being sick was not one of them. And we've got to just like nationals isn't happening. Like we're, mm -hmm. we, would be, we would be, we would be putting you on a path for failure if we went, if we moved forward with this and it was like your ability to just handle that and go, okay, I'm not doing that. I'm going to come back and like, you've come back and had great races since then. So yeah. um, <clears throat> it's, it's constantly, it's always, it's, it's always something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feel it like being in this whole experience has just been a really great example that like the best laid plans don't really mean anything. Like you can think, oh, well, this is exactly how my year is going to go. And then you start to come back into racing and then you get the flu, which is what we're talking about. And that's why I miss nationals is like, you know, that sort of stuff just, yep. it just happens sometimes and it can be mm -hmm. devastating. So I guess like for someone who, you know, I was so fortunate to have you and Al and so many other people during that time, but like for people yep. who are kind of like, do the punches ever stop coming? Like, do you have any advice for an athlete who's sort of trying to decide if they want to keep racing or not? Yeah. I mean, ultimately it still has to be fun. And I still yeah. think that there's like many, many days, more days than not, you enjoy the job of riding and training and you don't take that for granted. And you are like, no, this is cool. This is what I want to do. I want to be a bike racer. And, um, you know, I think if that leaves and ultimately like when Gwen was at her lowest of lows, you know, Jerry just was like, do you like doing this? She's like, I love, I love running. Like, this is what I love doing. And so you, you have to want to do it and you have to, that has to be where your passion is still. And then I would say it's worth, it's worth fighting through. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's for Gwen as a professional, like that's her job. So then if someone is, 
you know, like you, like you really should yeah, be just I mean, racing for fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in the case of myself, you know, you've got to know, you've got to have an acceptance mindset and say, look, Pat, you're 200 some pounds. You've trained for seven hours a week. Yeah. Races are going to be really tough and they're going to expose you. And are you going to be, do you want to be, you know, have that kind of punishment on? Yeah. And like, if you're say, yes, I do, because that's going to motivate me to move forward, but I'm going to, and I'm going to deal with the bad races and track my progress. I think that's really important. Um, you know, I've got great people around me that hold me accountable. I would encourage everyone to, I think coaches are undervalued in this space. I would encourage people to find and explore the best coaching options for them. And I think ultimately like coaches are the best resources. Training partners are fantastic resources. Um, and that's, those are the kind, those are the people that I really lean into and rely on as I'm getting ready for like my hobby. Yeah. <laughs> and finding coaches that challenge you in the right way. Yeah. Um, I think are really good. Not just seeking out people who just confirm. Yeah, they like, want to, they need to, Ultimately, you need to find coaches that strive to make you a better person and not just a better athlete. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think that's huge. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other important questions. Um, I think that was a great way to end it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else that you want to add? No. Okay. Cool. Well, Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so yeah, happy. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You just gonna so you're just gonna drop that live on YouTube and just say what? Chat with Pat or what? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, everyone, that is all for today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed that conversation with Pat as much as I did. I know that I certainly have a lot of great little nuggets of info to take into this weekend. And whether you are a bike racer, an athlete, or just are able to take some of this advice and apply it to your daily life. I hope that there's a little piece in there that you are able to take with you wherever you go. Hopefully I'll be back with you all next week to have another one of these conversations. And until then, I hope that you have an amazing day and do it with a smile. Goodbye.